slow practice makes fast progress. That's what my piano teacher used to tell me all the time. Like she drilled it into my head. And back then I already thought that was an interesting approach, but I wouldn't say that I really understood it. I did notice that if I played something relatively slow, it was like I kind of got a feel of what was actually happening, but then I was always pretty impatient. I just wanted to play it fast again. 50% of the time I could immediately do it at speed, but then there were other times where it just didn't really work. I was so stubborn, just kind of charging through some parts that probably needed a lot more slow practice. I was so impatient that there was nothing any of my teachers could do about me. <laughs> so there are some parts that I just could never play. Not proud of that, especially now that I'm a teacher and I can see it from their perspective now. Fast forward to me actually being a teacher. Over the past half a year now, I've been learning about different ways of processing music. For example, it never occurred to me that people who are more auditory dominant in learning music don't actually read the music very much. They just kind of use it as a loose guide. That blew my mind, by the way, when I found out that some of you guys read music like that. I am not the type of person who can listen to something once or twice and have it in my head. Even playing video games, I have to play the stage maybe for an hour before I remember most of the theme. And even if I hum it again, I hum it wrong. But then one thing I learned from you guys directly was kinesthetic learning. And I made a whole video about this, but I wanted to expound on that idea a bit more because now I've been experimenting even more with kinesthetic learning. I now realize that there are only really two ways to learn how something feels. One is to repeat it ad nauseum. The second is to do it very slowly. If you do both at the same time, you're golden. And kinesthetic learning, I think, is actually more based on accuracy. A lot of times I feel that as students, when we're learning music, we often confuse accuracy with speed. Most people, if they realize that they're slow at playing a piece of music, they will just start the metronome going, repeat it ad nauseum with the metronome, and you feel like you're beating your head against the wall when you're doing it. You skip straight to the like, okay, let's see how fast I can make this and make the metronome go faster and faster, but you still constantly feel like you're hitting a wall. What I found is that you need to split the two. So you need to start out without the metronome or at the very least with the metronome going Going really slow. It really depends on what type of learner you are. For some people having the metronome there is like a godsend, but for some people when they're actively learning the music, putting a metronome there is just the most distracting thing in the world. So you kind of have to experiment to see what works for you. In any case, you first want to focus on just the accuracy of what you're doing. You can kind of experiment and see what forces you to learn the notes properly. So I noticed that for visually dominant people like me, I close my eyes. I read and play it once and then I close my eyes and try to play it once. And I will always, always, and this still happens now, I will always hit a point where I draw a complete blank. Like I have no idea what's coming up next. That's when I open my eyes, I check to see what's next. Because it's such a shock to my system that I can't play the next bit, it's almost as if my brain takes extra energy to commit it to memory. Basically, my entire accuracy practice sessions are just me opening my eyes, closing my eyes, opening my eyes, and closing my eyes until I can do the whole thing with my eyes closed. Essentially, what is happening is that I am shutting off my strongest sense, which is sight. As a visually dominant person, when you do that, that's really the only way to force yourself to actually hear what you're playing and to actually feel what you're playing. I honestly, most of the time, don't listen to myself and I do not pay attention to what my fingers are doing. I don't pay attention to what my support's doing. I, I don't pay attention to anything. It's literally just notes Xerox it, spit out a copy. <laughs> For my auditory dominant folks, I find that I need to tell them to not listen to what they're playing. I went out for a walk the other day and I started to think about how I could force them to not listen to themselves because so far I've only had two auditory dominant students legitimately try this out, like not listening to what they're playing and just doing the regurgitation type of sight reading that I do naturally. They both said that it was the most disconcerting feeling in the world, but they knew that they did it correctly. <laughs> I was thinking, and maybe some of you guys can try this out and let me know how it works out for you, but if you're 
you're an auditory dominant person, I was thinking that it would be really fun to put noise canceling headphones on. Another way that I found that my auditory learners learn very well is they will not play at all and they'll just be doing the fingerings for what they see on the page. In that way, they're shutting off their strongest sense, which is their hearing, and just really focusing on what their fingers are actually doing and what they're actually seeing. So essentially, you have to find out which sense is your strongest because your strongest sense is usually so strong that it is your crutch. If you take out the crutch entirely, that can force you to use your other senses more. For those of you who are already kinesthetic learners, you probably don't have a problem with feeling out what you're doing. You might need to actually like look at the piece of music and try singing it. This is why I keep emphasizing that it's really important to know how you actually learn. That's the only way to basically use your strengths and your weaknesses to your advantage when you're practicing. Now, I've been teaching kinesthetic learning now to my visually dominant peeps and my auditory dominant peeps. And something I noticed was that everyone understood the concept of slow practice. I was really excited to teach them about it, right? I was like super excited. I was like, man, all my students are gonna be like so amazing, you know, after like one week, like I know it's gonna happen. That, that did not happen. They told me that they did slow practice. It was effective, but I was like, yo, I, I feel like I feel like it should have been way more effective by now. I just kind of, by process of elimination, try to work out what was different about how I slow practice versus how they slow practice. I decided to kind of keep a mental timer in my head of how long I take when I slow practice something. And I discovered that it was an average of five minutes that I would spend on the one issue that I was working out. So maybe it was one phrase or it was, or it was one section. Maybe I'm working on tone. So I'm like sitting on one bar from the Trevor Y books, you know, why? Like, why do I spend five minutes on one thing? If you think about it, that's a freaking long time. It's the same as when I go out for walks. The first two to three minutes, my brain is still in complete chaos. Thinking about a million things at the same time. My brain really does not calm down until starting around the fourth minute of walking. That's when I really start to feel like, oh, I can be one with nature and I can be present and I can, you know, really enjoy the sunlight and the fresh air. I don't notice any of that stuff before the fourth minute. Slow practicing for five minutes is exactly the same thing. Like to be really honest, nothing happens in the first two to three minutes. Like nothing. Things don't feel like they're getting better. Things don't feel like they're changing. You kind of feel like you're wasting your time and it's very easy to feel like you're going to give up. Every time it's by around the fourth minute is when I really start to feel things I haven't felt before and I really start to hear things that I haven't heard before in my own playing that I can improve. I was like, okay, so if I'm like this, then I should ask my students. So I started to go around asking my students, like all of them, can you tell me, you know, no judgment here. Realistically, how many minutes do you actually spend on slow practicing? They all told me that their slow practicing was really only between 30 seconds and two minutes. And so the next experiment I started to do was to actually make my students experience the five minutes of slow practicing something. I actually timed a number of them during a lesson. I didn't trick them into it. I did tell them that for the first minute, you're gonna be like, wow, this is boring. For the second minute, you're gonna be like, nothing is changing. I'm wasting my time. By the third minute, you're gonna be like, why am I still doing this? And then by the fourth minute is when you're like, hmm. You know, now that I'm stuck doing this, I might as well try and make it better. And then that's when you start to hear things that you normally wouldn't hear and you feel things that you normally wouldn't feel. And the amount of progress that they made in those five minutes was incredible. And every time at the end of the five minutes, every single student looked at me and was like, wow, that did get a lot better at the end there. I was like, yeah, and if you think about it, it was really only five minutes, even though it did not feel that way. It probably felt like a million years. And everyone was like, yes, oh my gosh, it felt like a million years. And I'm like, yeah, but this is, this is actual slow practicing. <laughs> actual slow practicing 
is extremely meditative. I feel like one of the reasons why we don't realize that we're not getting into that meditative state these days is because this world that we live in is just like go 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 like everything is instant gratification when we go to try something nowadays most everyone expects that to be able to do it within the first few seconds to be real the idea of practicing something for hours to get it right is actually really foreign to us these days i can't just tell people to slow practice these days i literally have to set an actual time frame for them to be slow practicing because these days it's it's not natural for us to do anything slow i do hope that one day i will be able to teach this type of practicing in different ways and if you guys have any ideas about this leave them in the comments below as always if you guys want to hang out with me during the week i'm on twitch and patreon but otherwise i'll see you guys next week <laughs>